The simplest model that we can look at is a single filamentary coil above uh, conducting half plane. And let's go ahead and look at the model file here. So I essentially have two regions. I've got an air region and I have an aluminum region. So this is this obviously the model has finite dimension here, but very close to the circular excitation coil, the solution will be that of a of a single coil above an infinite plane. And in fact this can be compared to analytical solutions to compare accuracy with the finite element model and it compares very well with analytical solutions. If I look at the edges here, I've got my my solution region has a boundary here where I have to assign some sort of boundary condition on the vector potential. So I'm choosing zero boundary condition on the vector potential here. Um, actually, the flux function, which is the, the radial coordinate r times the vector potential. For the vertex label, I have a single vertex that is labeled with coil and the coil has an AC current of one ampere flowing in it. The aluminum has a conductivity of 2.7 times 10 to the 7 s per m and it has a permeability of 1, relative permeability of 1. The air region has a relative permeability of 1. And I can change the frequency of my model If I look at the properties, of the model. So here you can see under the problem properties, we're in AC magnetics. Um, the frequency is 1 hertz, so we probably want to have a frequency a little bit higher. So I'll choose a, a frequency of 100 hertz here. And these files correspond to the, the model file and also the data file. Uh, corresponding to the, the parameter values for each region here. So I'll go ahead and solve the problem. Okay. And we can zoom in to see the eddy current uh, density here. The eddy current density is in amps per square meter, and you can see the peak eddy current density is located towards the top of the plane. Uh, this is the magnetic field due to the single filamentary coil, and if we want to animate this, we can look and see how the, the magnetic field varies with phase or time, essentially. I can also make a contour plot of the eddy current density along a radial contour. And I'll choose a contour roughly one centimeter underneath the surface. So this is the total current density, which is the same as the eddy current density. Or we can also look at the flux, the flux function and so forth. We can tile our various windows here if we want to go back. I can clear the contour and create a new contour, perhaps at a vertical uh, orientation. The next problem I want to look at is similar to this one, but a more realistic coil with a finite cross section. So this is our model file, and you can see the, the mesh in this region. I'll scale to fit the entire page here. Uh, instead of a semi-infinite half plane, we have uh, a circular disk. This is the air region with permeability 1. 
this is the aluminum disc, and this is our coil with a circular cross section. Now the coil here has a conductivity of copper, 3.8 times 10 to the 7 S per M, uh, with unit permeability. Once again, the aluminum, 2.7 times 10 to the 7. Once again, I choose zero vector potential around the boundary here. I've also labeled uh, one side of the disk here. And in Label Mover, I can actually translate this and do the simulation repeatedly, uh, thereby simulating the effect of, of thickness variation that might, the thickness could vary uh, due to corrosion that occurring in our metal plate here. So I want to look at the, the properties here. We well, see we have AC magnetics, rather low frequency, 100 hertz. So we can visualize the eddy current density a little bit better. And let's go ahead and solve the model. It's already been solved. However, I'll, I'll resolve it so we can get an idea of the solution time here. And it solved it. So this is the, uh, the eddy current density and the flux distribution. Once again, we can animate the magnetic field. Some of the magnetic field is generated by current that's flowing in the circular disk here. In fact, if you look at a phase angle of 90 degrees, then primarily the magnetic field will be due to eddy currents that are flowing in our object under inspection. Now what I want to do is calculate the impedance of our drive coil. And I can do that by creating a contour around the coil here. And I better turn off the um, magnetic field line so you can see the contour a little bit more accurately. So I'm creating a contour around the circular, the cross section of, of the circular coil. Okay, now I can look at the integral quantities. For example, the total current flowing, the eddy current, as well as many other physical quantities associated with the coil. Now, if I want to calculate the impedance, I can go to the impedance wizard where I sec select the coil and it displays the impedance, the resistance, and the reactance in ohms and also the inductance in Henry's. And of course, this will vary with frequency. And also, it'll change as a function of our, the thickness of our sample as well as liftoff between the coil and the probe here. The presence of any defects also will change the uh, impedance. OK, I want to look at a simulation where we add an additional coil. So we'll have a primary excitation coil and a secondary pickup coil. So let's look at the, the geometry is very similar to what we had before. I've essentially added an additional coil. This is the air region. This is the drive coil. And this is the pickup coil. OK. Now you can see, when I highlight the air region, that even 
So the conducting disk has a permeability or is assigned to air region. So what I need to do is tag the label aluminum with the, the disk here. And I define all these labels when I set up the model file. Okay. This is the boundary of the solution region with zero flux function. Once again, I've assigned a boundary here um, for the sole purpose of translating it. There's no vertices uh, defined in this particular model. So let's go ahead and solve the problem. Problem has a very fine mesh here. That's not necessary to have an extremely fine mesh in this region. Okay. So this is the primary coil. This is the secondary pickup coil. And I can calculate the current that's flowing in the uh, secondary coil. Let's turn off the field lines. I'm going to zoom in to the secondary coil. And once again, I'm going to select a contour that navigates around. Notice the contour direction changed when I clicked it correctly. Now I want to look at integral values. So if we look at the integral values, I can look at the total current, which gives me the magnitude of the current, the phase, and the, the real and the imaginary parts of the current flowing. And this is in the pickup coil, as well as the eddy current, power flow, etc. You can calculate the force between the, the coil and the plane. So what I want to do is, is use the label mover feature to calculate the current flowing in the pickup coil as a function of frequency. So I'll illustrate this, this label mover feature. So under the tools menu, I go to parametric analysis with label mover. 